figure it's only fitting now that I'm doing a series of videos called Lens Days that we actually talk about some lenses. And I want to do my picks for the best lenses that have come out in 2019 in this video. I think this has been a really interesting year, really the last two years, in that we have this rush into the mirrorless space. So we have a lot of new products, a lot of new lenses that are coming out. And we have bigger mounts, which supposedly is encouraging designers to do more with the lens design that they're capable of in the optics. We have advancements with autofocus. So we've seen a lot of really cool things come out. And so that's what I want to talk about. So there's basically five categories here that because I, it's really not fair to pick one lens as a favorite that's a portrait lens when there's some great wide angles. So I have five categories that I want to talk about. We've got ultra wide, we've got wide, we've got normal length, short telephoto and long telephoto. And I'm going to do my overall pick for the best lens of 2019 in my not so humble and always accurate opinion. But first I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. Squarespace is an all in one solution for building beautiful websites, portfolios, or even an online store. They have an awesome drag and drop interface. You can build websites without having to write a single line of code. Squarespace now also features calendar integration. So if you want to do scheduling with clients, let's say, this is now super easy and a major lifesaver. So head over to Squarespace, do the free trial and see if Squarespace is right for you. If it is, I can save you an additional 10% off your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That offer code once again is AOP and I want to give a special thanks and shout out to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of the Art of Photography. So there are some parameters that I set up for my picks for best lens of the year. First of all, obviously they had to come out this year. So in 2019, not a lens that came out in 2018. So if something's missing that you think is superior, that could be one of the reasons why. Also, these are all lenses that I have actually used. And so there, obviously I haven't hit everything. So if you don't see your favorite in here, don't hate me too much. This is just based on a large selection that I have used this year. There are four criteria that I use for selecting a lens in any given category, and they are optics, features, price and size. So for instance, you have lenses that have incredible optics, but they're really low on feature set and they're really high in price. And so I'll talk about this as I go along of why I picked each one of these, but that is a determining factor. Like I could pick a lens like that, but it really has to be incredible to have that trade off between price, size and lack of features, but incredible optics. And there's some lenses that fall into that category, but mostly I try to keep them pretty practical. So let's begin with our first category, which is ultra wide angle lenses. Now this one, actually has a tie. I've picked two lenses to be the best lenses in the ultra wide category. The first one is the Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 DG DN art lens. That's a lot of initials in the title, but typically when you see DN in a Sigma lens, that means it's designed native for mirrorless. So you can get this in two mounts right now. You can get it in Sony E mount and you can also get it in Leica L mount. Of course, Canon and Nikon have not opened up autofocus lenses to third parties at this point. So it is a little bit limited and that's why I picked two in this category. How However, this is an extremely sharp lens. The performance is outstanding. It obviously is aimed to sort of compete with the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter lens, but it's not quite as wide. That's a little bit of the trade-off. This is about a $1,400 lens. I think the price is pretty fair for what you get. I think it's extremely well built. The autofocus obviously is incredible. One of the downsides is this lens does lack filter threading. So if you want to use filters on it, you're going to have to use a filter holder system like the Wine Country one that I talk about a lot. And you're going to have to use the bigger one that comes with mounts where it will strap over the lens. That's one of the problems that you're going to have. Other than that, that's the only downside. I think this lens is fabulous. And I picked two in this category. The second one that I picked is the Nikkor Z 14 to 30 millimeter F4S lens. I was really excited when Nikon announced this this year. It did not disappoint. This is a ultra wide angle lens that first of all, does not require you to use some kind of external filter system and has filter threads on it. So you can use just standard filters. You can screw them in. It's extremely sharp. It handles distortion really well, even at 14 millimeters. In fact, it's it's one of the best lenses I've used in terms of distortion. That's a problem that you're going to have when lenses get this wide on a full frame camera. I think this is an excellent addition to the Z system. The only issue I would say that is kind of an issue, it is an F4 lens. So you're not going to use it to handhold in really low light. You're going to run into some issues there unless you're super steady. But if you're shooting architecture, you're shooting landscapes, you're probably going to be on a tripod anyway. And I don't think this has to be as wide, but that's the other reason I picked the Sigma in here also, because it's an F 2.8. I know these are for two completely different systems, but these are my two picks for ultra wide angle lens of 2019. Our next category has a tie as well. I picked one prime lens and one zoom lens for the wide angle category. So let's go ahead and start with the prime lens. This is the Fujifilm XF 16 millimeter F 2.8 RWR. This is another doubling up in the prime 
lens category that Fujifilm has done. You probably are aware that things like the 23 millimeter has two different versions of that lens as well as the 35. Now we have the same thing with the 16 millimeter. Now the 16 millimeter f1.4 is one of my favorite lenses and has been for a number of years in the Fujifilm XF system. So they released this one, which I've been curious about. It's an incredible price point, but I haven't really tried until recently. And I am doing a comparison video that I will have coming out soon on both the 16 millimeter Fujifilm lenses. This one is absolutely incredible. It is an f2.8. It's not a 1.4. The biggest difference is the size. It's extremely compact. I think Fujifilm do this really well. They don't make massive lenses, but they're still really good in terms of optics and the way they render. This one does pretty much 90% of what the f1.4 does. It's just missing that extra stop. You can still get a nice bouquet look to things when you get close up with this lens. may not be razor sharp enough, but this is also a $400 option. So this is why I would pick this for the prime wide angle lens for this year. The zoom lens I picked to tie in this category is the Canon RF 15 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 L IS USM lens. This one is absolutely incredible. Canon have come out of the gate swinging with the RF mounts lenses and I think this is one of the more practical lenses in this lineup that I think is very well priced considering this is a 16 to 35. They added an extra millimeter into the bottom end so it's a 15 to 35 but this is a standard wide angle zoom that you would want with any system. I think at $2,300 uh, the price is right considering the optics are amazing. You do get the function ring and you also have image stabilization in this lens. It's sharp it's incredible. It has a beautiful bouquet to it. It's very Canon. And I think this represents the gem for me this year in the RF mount. So let's move up to our normal focal length category. I picked a 50 millimeter F1.4 lens this year, but it's one of the best ones I've ever used. This is the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 50 millimeter F1.4. I've had several opportunities to use this. This is a very expensive lens. It's a $2,300 50 millimeter lens, but it is also incredible. This was designed for the Panasonic L mount. It's half the price the Leica if that makes your decision any easier. But when I got to use this lens, Panasonic explained to me that this was designed to be a reference lens. It is massive. It is big. The optical quality on it is incredible. It can do beautiful bokeh if that's what you want. It can also render really sharp. This is easily the best lens that's been released in 2019 in our normal focal length category. So this is my pick for the best normal lens of 2019. Next up is the short telephoto or portrait focal length category. This one was really tough because we've seen some really great lenses has come out in 2019. The Canon 85 millimeter with the focus is absolutely gorgeous. I actually really like the Nikkor Z 85 millimeter f1.8, but if I had to give it to only one lens, which is what I've done, it is the Sony FE 135 millimeter f1.8 G Master lens. This one is probably one of my favorite lenses ever made. It's not cheap. It is about a $2,000 lens. I had the opportunity to go on the press trip for this lens this year. I met the designer. It's incredible. Lens Rentals has tested this and they've kind of declared it the sharpest lens that they have ever bench tested. And it is very sharp. That's not my favorite thing about it. What I love about it is that it gives you an amazing contrast between creamy bouquet and sharpness. So it's just a really beautiful well-rounded lens. This is my pick for best telephoto lens of the year. It is not my best overall though. We're going to get to that soon. But first let's do the long telephoto. This is not an easy category to pick a lens that's practical within because prime lenses that are for sports or wildlife photography tend to be astronomically expensive. We're talking $10,000, $14,000. They are incredible lenses. They are not practical to own. The alternative is that you can get longer zoom or telephoto lenses. And I just don't think that I've seen anything that renders up to the standard as my number one pick this year, which is the Sony FE 600 millimeter F4 G Master with optical image stabilization. I was on the press trip for this lens this year. I got to shoot another soccer game. I have also used the 400, which is an incredible lens too. And I think the 600 is just gorgeous. It's a really long telephoto lens. It's really big. It's cumbersome. It's extremely expensive. But if you were a sports or wildlife shooter, this is really the best choice out there, hands down. Of course, it's very timely with the Tokyo Olympics next year, but it's an incredible lens. And finally, I would like to share with you my pick for best lens of 2019, which is the Sony FE 35 millimeter F 1.8. This is a complete sleeper lens. There was no press trip for this this year. In fact, Sony didn't even send me one to check out. They'd sent them to a couple colleagues of mine. I didn't think much of it. I thought at $750 for another 35 millimeter, this is an F 1.8 and maybe a little high, but then I saw some of the images that were being made with it. And I called a couple of my friends who I knew had the lens and I'm like, what do you think? 
Finally, I just had to buy one. This lens is incredible. It's not a G Master lens. There's no XA element in there, so it doesn't get the crazy hype that a lot of the G Master lenses do. It, you didn't have a press trip with it. There was no major announcement. It was just like, here's a new lens. The micro contrast on this, the sharpness are incredible. And I want to say something about Sony. They turned a real corner about two years ago with the announcement of the 400 millimeter F2.8, which is a telephoto sports lens. That's not a practical lens for people to own, for most people to own anyway, unless you shoot sports for a living. So I don't think a lot of people took note, but that was kind of like we got into a whole new generation of Sony lenses because everything that's come after that has just been a complete home run. The 24 millimeter G Master, for instance, was the next one down the pike. The 135, which was my pick this year for the best portrait length telephoto. This one is just as incredible as the others. Now, it's not super sexy. It's just kind of the black tube look. You have a focus ring and that's it. Well, you do have a focus function button here and you can turn the switch between autofocus and manual focus but there's no aperture collar. I wish it had a little more to it because this is a little too stark for me. I would love to at least have an aperture collar. Typically those only go on the G Master lenses so that's just Sony's design aesthetic. It renders way better than the other Sony lens which is the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4. This lens is sharper. The bouquet is better. There's a little bit of purple fringing but it's nothing you can't fix in an editor. It is smaller. It is more compact. It's much more light. It's also also just a fraction of the cost of the other lens and so there's really not enough good things that I can say about it. it tested really well over at Lens Rentals and this is the type of lens that I'm talking about where if you balance out all the features and the cost I would say actually that this is a highly recommended lens if you are in the Sony E-mount system uh, just because the autofocus is so good it renders so well you're really going to love this and it's at a very decent price point and it also proves that lenses don't have to be extreme wide apertures and really expensive to be any good this lens performs just as well as things that cost two, three times as much. So that is my picks for lenses of the year. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any lenses that you loved that I did not recommend and you'd like to scold me for it, please drop me a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.